Okay, so the uh, starter today is a crate falls out of the back of a truck moving uh, 30 meters per second. Uh, the crate slides to a stop in six seconds. So let's find um, the acceleration and let's find the coefficient of kinetic friction. And here, of course, we're assuming that we have a constant deceleration of that crate. Okay, so let's set it up with given, find, and solve. That's the first step of the procedure. So I'm going to write given. And I'm going to draw a little sketch of the problem. It's a very simple little sketch. Here's the road. And then here's the crate. And we're assuming it's a nice flat road here. And at the beginning, it has an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. OK, now we don't, we don't know its mass. Um, but I do know that in a, after six seconds, it's going to be over here. And its final velocity is going to be 0. And at that, the time where it stops is at six seconds. So this is all we know. And notice that I drew what was given around a little sketch of the problems. That helps me visualize it. So what are we trying to find? Well, we want to find, um, for part A, we want to know what is the acceleration of the crate. And then for B, we want to find mu. OK, so let's solve. So for part A, um, finding the acceleration is pretty easy here because we know the initial velocity, we know the final velocity, and we know the time, and we're trying to find acceleration. So use the first kinematic equation on our list, V equals V naught plus A times T. And now I can solve for uh, the acceleration acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. Also, you can think of this as being delta v over delta t. Remember we said acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Well, that's exactly what this is. Now we can plug in our numbers. Uh, the values given, uh, the final velocity is 0 minus 30 meters per second divided by time, six seconds. So the acceleration is, well, this is negative 30 divided by six is five, right? 30 divided by six is five. But it is negative, And it has units of meters per second every second, or meters per second squared. And that's my answer for part A. OK, now part B is going to take a little bit more work. We're trying to find mu. So try to start with, with, uh, you know, with what you're trying to find. And we know that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. So write that down. When you're taking a test, just write it down, even if you don't know where to go. Write it down, because you're going to get partial credit for that. Now solve it for mu. So mu equals the force of friction divided by the normal force. Well, this tells me what to do next. Obviously, if I want to solve for mu, I need to figure out what the force of friction is and what the normal force is. Well, I look, uh, whenever I'm trying to find forces, I have to use the procedure. So let's engage that uh, procedure uh, for forces. I'm going to draw the free body diagram. That's step two of the procedure, right? Step one is to do given, find, and solve. And now step two is to draw the free body diagram. Uh, gravity is pulling down on the crate. The floor is pushing up on the crate with a normal force. And as this thing slides to a stop, we've got kinetic friction pulling it to the left. Uh, now let's identify our x and y direction. 
which is going to be very important when we get back from Thanksgiving break because we're going to start doing these problems where this could change. So there's our xy axis. Oops. If I'm off camera, please let me know. So here's step two, free body diagram, and that. Now let's uh, do step uh, four. So let's sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x. Okay, now I look at my drawing, I look at my free body diagram. I mean, that's what this is telling me. Hey, look at the free body diagram. How many forces in the x direction? There's only one. So, uh, negative force of friction is equal to ma. Um, well, I know what uh, m is. I mean, I don't know what m is, but I do know what a is. I figured that out before. But this is just ma. So, oh, I know that the force of friction is going to have, you know, the, well, I can figure that out. Now, let's sum the forces in the y direction. It's going to be equal to ma in the y direction. And I look in the y direction, and I say, well, there's two forces. I've got the normal force in the, in the positive direction minus the weight equals zero. Now what does this tell me? Well, this tells me that um, the normal force is equal to the weight. So now I've got an expression for the force of friction and for the normal force, which now allows me to solve for mu. So let's just say, okay, the force of friction is equal to uh, ma. I don't. I can ignore the negative because with mu, I don't really care about the direction of the forces. And then here's the normal force equals mg. And this is neat. I mean, look, the mass doesn't matter. I didn't give you the mass, and uh, um, so. And that's okay because no matter what the mass is, it's going to cancel out of the equation. So your crate that's sliding to a stop on the highway, um, it doesn't matter if that crate is empty or full. It's going to slide to a stop at a, about the same time. Now, by the way, this ignores air resistance. And obviously, if a box is really light, uh, air resistance is going to be more significant than on something that's really heavy. But in this class, we ignore air resistance. So the mass cancels out, and I'm left with 5 meters per second squared divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. If you plug that into a calculator, notice the units all cancel. You get 0 0.51. So mu, the kinetic friction mu, is equal to 0 0.51, and that's your answer to part B. Any questions?